All right, now we're gonna go over the five most common types of responses. So first one would be if a prospect expresses interest. Here, you wanna make it very easy for them. And again, you wanna get it off LinkedIn and get their email or phone number. So option one, to make it easy for them, we offer and propose three times instead of them going back to their calendar and fishing for a time. And then option two, it's about going for the email. See, the tendency for me to respond to this would have been to elaborate on our service, but instead I asked straight for the email. Now this isn't a silver bullet, but in this case it worked. And in many cases in our experience, um, it has worked. Next, if you get a generic response, this is very common on LinkedIn. Someone like Elliot will ask, hey, this is helpful or this is great. And then as you can see, again, I go straight for that email. Not a silver bullet, but in this case it worked. Whatever you do here, you want to ask for an email or phone number to help transition the conversation. And then option two, more effectively, is the open-ended question. So as you can see, one of our clients responded to this by looking at this gentleman's LinkedIn profile and asking him an open-ended question relevant to his profile, right? And that earned him a, com a conversation. And as you can see, he responded quickly. This was about two hours from the original, but after that, he caught him while he was on LinkedIn very quickly. Now I wanna show an example of an open-ended question that's a little more powerful and ideally get someone to think differently and shine a light on a problem because most people are problem unaware. So for example, and this is of a sales coach that I saw a video on once, when you walk into a retail store and the associate asks you, how can I help you today? Or, hey, do you have any problems looking for anything or need any help looking for anything? Your tendency is to say no to that because you're not sure if they can help you. Instead, this shoe store associate asked this coach, they said, when is the last time you got your gait checked? And gait is, is a running term I'm unfamiliar with, but the point being, it's a great question to get someone to think, well, you know, I haven't, I don't think I've ever gotten my gate checked. And then they can go into a pitch that's relevant to that problem where they can say, oh, well, we actually do that for free here. And we recommend it because if you do have this issue, you can get injured when running a marathon, right? So it, it's some question that can dig out a problem that you need to know. And Next here, I want to go over if a prospect asks you a straight question. So here it's pretty simple. We want to keep it very short under a paragraph. And again, make sure we research the prospect. So our client, Tom, asked them a question, got a good answer, but Mike obviously had its own question. And so Tom went into a pitch, but he customized it a bit. He said, uh, in Northern Ohio. So he obviously looked at his profile, showed some credibility here. He could have taken it a step further by saying potential industrial engineering or distribution companies, right? And then he has a clear call to action. And then of course he did end up earning this coffee meeting. Um, you can attach a brochure. We only recommend that if it's well-designed and very persuasive but it worked in Tom's case. And then over here, obviously Kate in this situation wanted to bypass a step in the sales process by going straight for the quote. And instead of providing it on the spot, Ashley transitions the conversation to email. And once she gets to email, she transitions it to a call as she knows that the sale is better over the call and she probably needs more information to provide an accurate quote. So lastly here, I want to go over objections. The most common being no thanks, which there's no silver bullet to this. We found that no thanks either means one of two things. It's either the truth and they're not interested, in which case you should just ignore it or say, thank you for your time. 
or B, it's actually bad timing or you've reached out to the wrong person. So we can ask a question here that's like, when would a better time be to reach out or who might be the best to reach about this? I figured it was your VP of finance. Number two would be a common objection, which obviously you know how to handle better than anyone, but best practices for framing that are a couple things. Number one is to empathize. So we might lead a response with, hey, that makes a lot of sense or totally understand a lot of CFOs I work with use that competitor, right? It's, it's diffusing it. It's being very empathetic. And then B, we want to use third-party credibility. So something I might say is, hey, many CFOs I work with say they usually have a dedicated AP specialist spending five hours a week on Excel, right? That, and what this is, is it's not assuming that they have that problem and it's not calling them out and hurting their ego. It's saying a lot of other CFOs I work with have this problem or do this inefficiently. And then C, we want to diffuse it and end D with a low friction call to action. So for example, a diffuser, which is a sales diffuser, might be, I'm not sure how your accounts payables work, but if we reduced manual entry, would you explore that? Again, very soft call to action, and it diffuses because we don't really know how they run their AP. Or number two, I'll show an example of a low friction CTA, which might be if you got an objection about a competitor, you might say, hey, so you can compare us. Would you like it if I emailed you my number one ad for gym owners with my exact follow-up script and my favorite smoothie recipe? And that, that right there would be humor, again, a sales diffuser, and then low friction. All you're asking for is to email them a value add, right? Something very easy to say yes to. And lastly, I'll go over how to re-engage leads, which very commonly on LinkedIn, you go back and forth, they're very interested, and then they get busy, right? And so one popular thing that works is to find their email or phone number and reach them very quickly for the follow-up. So I'll tell this very short story over here to my right, which you can read. But essentially, I saw a good piece of content which we encourage our clients to post content on LinkedIn. I reached out to this vendor and within five minutes, instead of going back and forth with me over LinkedIn, he went to his database and found my phone number and kind of warm called me. Within five minutes of my message, we demoed his tool and we actually bought a one-year license, right? So it's, it's not, it's okay, especially if they're interested to give them a ring. And so I'll show you our best ways for finding someone's email, uh, either through a tool or straight up off their profile. So for Lead Leaper, we want to click on their LinkedIn profile and use our Lead Leaper Chrome extension to pull their work email. So now I'm going to show you on a first degree connection Sometimes they'll have their email and phone number if we click contact info.